everyone. Welcome to the 585 question answer walkthroughs. Um, I'm Heather Mahalik, and you can see my contact information at the bottom. Terrence McGuire, Lee Crognelli, and myself have decided to just pick a few questions from our Google group. We have this alumni group designed for students who have taken 585 who stumble upon issues during a smartphones investigation after they take the class. And we have chosen a few questions to walk through that we'll show you with either slides or live demos on things that have occurred. So if you take 585 and you do have questions or if you have in the past, you can always post to this group. And in the future, we'll probably do more things like this. So this is gonna be a mini series. My first one that I have selected is all based on iPhone. So I chose two different questions and this is where we're gonna start. So your first option is well, obviously not an option. Your first step is to collect the evidence. So you have to acquire the iOS device. Um, you can do this through a commercial tool, uh, whichever one you prefer, or through an iTunes backup. What we recommend is that you encrypt it because you ultimately get more data when you encrypt these backup files. Um, if you stumble upon an encrypted backup that you need to crack, I recommend you listen to Terrence McGuire's iTunes backup cracking using Hashcat. Um, he's going to do a webcast on that that will also be a little 10-minute mini webcast. So keep your eye out for that one. Once you have acquired your data, you just have to load it into your tool of choice. Make sure your tool properly decrypts that data. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to find these files that I'm about to talk about. So our first question is how to determine if iMessage is disabled on a device. The main reason you would want to do this is synchronization, or if you had to prove that the user was texting an Android user or an iPhone user. So there are many reasons where this could occur. Your settings. So on the left-hand side, we can see iMessage is turned off. And on the right-hand side, I have a different iPhone and I have iMessage turned on. You'll notice that it says iMessage, iMessages can be sent between iPhone, iPad, iPod Touch, and Mac and sending or receiving uses wireless data. So this is something else we could do to put a user possibly in a location with iMessage being on and off. So I try to keep everything in this little webcast here with iMessage turned off on the left-hand side and iMessage turned on on the right. So our first file of interest is comapple.imservice.ids.imessage.plist. On the left-hand side, and here I'm just using a free uh, plist editor to look at this in list view because I think it makes it look nice and clean. So I exported my plist of interest and I'm looking at it. On the left, we can see active accounts and online accounts have zero values. So there's nothing in there. On the left hand side, iMessage is turned off. Now, if it's turned on, on the right hand side, we can see we have two unique GUIDs. So these graphical user IDs under values, under active accounts, and then also online accounts. Do you notice that there are two active accounts and those do it also match online accounts? The reason this is the right hand screenshot is my iPhone and I can actively iMessage from my phone number or from my email address. So one of those do represents my phone number and the other represents my email address. And again, that screenshot on the right would match the iPhone settings on the right hand screen that we're looking at here. Now, if it is turned on, this is where you can get a lot of information about the user. So up top, we see those two values that we just discussed, those unique GUIDs. And then under accounts, what I'm looking at under accounts here is this first one, 33E18. As we start going down, we can see that the region is United States. We can see a number. So that's my phone number. As we keep going down, we can see this ESSapple.com as service host or server host. What this is, is Apple looks up every single person you attempt to communicate with to see if they're an iPhone user or not. So it knows how to transmit that message. Um, there are awesome plist files stored on the iPhone itself that tracks this actual Apple lookup. So that can actually be helpful. Um, you can see that I am set to automatically log in, which is true. I have my authentication ID. I blurred that out just for privacy purposes. And then you can see these vetted aliases. I can log in as hmahalik at Gmail, hmahalik at iCloud, or hmahalik at ME. And I chose hmahalik at gmail.com is what I'm automatically logged in as. If you go down to this bottom option here, the D35E1, 
to it, that would be where I'm vetted as my phone number. So again, if it is active on the right hand side, and you find that it's active on the right hand side here, additionally go to I am service, I message plist, and look at this file. Um, another plist that may be of interest to you is the I am service Madrid plist. And Madrid is the code word that Apple used for iMessage before iMessage was coined a real term. And ultimately, you're going to find a lot of other plists that probably track iMessage or not. So just be aware that those are two key ones that will help you. Now, the next question, how to determine if iCloud restore occurred? So some reasons you would want to do this. If you're working a case where a user wiped their device and you think they're possibly putting someone else's data on the phone, um, a student that asked this question, their concern was they had three iPhones. Two of them seemed to be exactly the same. So they think that they restored the same iCloud backup to two devices, which is also really possible. Most people want to know, did the user wipe and restore? And if so, from where? So that is the goal of this question. There is one file that is amazing for answering this question. Com Apple Purple Buddy PLS. On the left hand side, under setup state, we can see restored from iCloud backup, all one word. That makes it pretty clear that this was restored from an iCloud backup. If you look up under guest countries right here, so we have guest country. When your iPhone boots, it's guessing which country you're in and making that recommendation. Here it said it guessed United States. And then we have a date, 2018, 918 at 95749. That is when this screen occurred. So what you could say is around 957.49 on September 18th, 2018, the user started the process of restoring from an iCloud backup. Now, if you look at the date above this, we can see setup last exit, 921, 2018. And I know exactly what occurred here because this is me when I got my new iPhone, setting it all up. I had restored from iCloud backup, but then I also had to go in and finish the setup and include my wallet information or anything else. And that happened on 921. But the setup last access date is not really as relevant to you as this guest country date that we have right here. So on the left, the user did restore from iCloud. On the right, we can see setup state, setup using assistant. On this device, I restored from iTunes. Now, if you look down at the bottom, again, we could say on November 10th, 2018, around 13, 11, 11, a user had started the iTunes backup initialization process. Now, if you found right before those two dates and times that we see here, September 21st, 2018, and 11 10 2018 on a separate device. If you found traces of a white, that's of interest to you. But Calm Apple Purple Buddy PLS is fantastic for tracking how the device was set up when you got it. Bottom line, a PLS is going to hold the answer. The hard part, can you find it? And that is really where all of our struggles are. I recommend you find a tool that works for you, um, one that you know how to trick into keyword searching the way you want it to. Um, also, if you come across a date and time, like right here, that doesn't make sense, you may have to validate and test it. When I first saw these dates and times, I was a little unsure myself. So then I would wipe my device, restore again. I would document when I restored, when I finished setting up wallet, and all of those steps to validate and say, okay, this is what this means. This is what this means. Um, on an iPhone, it is very easy to wipe your device, do this setup process again, and be right back where you left off. So we are really blessed if we're iPhone users and we have them for testing, but it makes it a lot easier. But it is up to you to validate and test. If this topic or any of these mini series seem interesting to you, here are some upcoming courses. Um, in 2019, right in the middle of 2019, we're gonna be in Amsterdam. And then in February, 585 will be offered in New Orleans, Dallas, Texas, and Tyson's Corner. Um, you'll see New Orleans has a star by it because we're also running simulcast there. What this means is you get the live nine to five class from your home or your office or wherever you want to take it. So you are physically at your own private location, but you are virtually in the classroom. So you get the full classroom experience, which makes it different than on demand. Um, in or April, we're in Orlando, London, and Boston. So we're going worldwide in the first quarter of 2019. Um, obviously, you can always take the class on demand as well, but we'd love to see your face 
at one of these events.